Well, hello everyone. I have got a little surprise for you. I have an unboxing, and what do I have today without further ado? I just got a phone call and went down to my local FFL and picked this up. This right here is obviously a Rossi, and it is a Rossi 357 Magnum RP63. This is, I believe this came out about a year ago, this pistol. It's a stainless steel 3-inch 3 357 Magnum. So, you see in the box, let's see what's in the box. Legendary performance. And as you all know, I believe that Rossi is now owned by the Taurus, they call it the Brazil group or something like that. It says it on the back of the box. We'll look at that afterwards. In the box, you get, of course, standard warning, lead hazard warning. Put that aside. You have your owner's manual, which is always good. They always do a good job with their owner's manuals. Rossi revolvers. And we'll flip through this quickly. Table of contents. Very nice illustrations, and that's not the revolver. Mine only has, I believe it's a six inch. This is, it's only a three inch, the one that I purchased. Okay, different dangers and different warnings. Safety and cleaning. Warning, warning, warning. Firearm storage. There is your different a graph of different points of the revolver specifications how to use the lock that uh, of course I recommend you be safe but we all know what happens with those things flip through notice very uh, well illustrated how to get a good sight picture do's and don'ts wear your eyes and ears How to adjust your, if you have an adjustable sight for the rear. Loading and unloading. A breakdown with a parts legend. Exploded view, which is always nice. Trust me, these things can actually save you. Not only just for ordering parts and here's all your parts list. But to familiarize yourself with the actual inner workings of the uh, revolver, when I picked it up, I made the mistake of saying to my FFL pistol, and he said, revolver. I'm like, well, I've been gotten. I stand corrected. So, yeah, everyone makes mistakes. And it's about your service. And this comes with a one-year limited warranty. Okay, um, the ins and outs of it, uh, it's okay, it's Brazil Tech International LC. Uh, one year limited warranty to the original purchaser of the enclosed Rossi revolver, subject to the terms and conditions set forth below. So, it's a one year limited warranty. Hmm. What does the warranty cover and what is its duration? Brazil Tech warranties to the original purchaser that the enclosed revolver was made free of defects in material, function, and workmanship for one year after the date of purchase. Brazil Tech promises to remedy any defect in such material, function, or workmanship. Further, if Brazil Tech cannot remedy any such defects after a reasonable number of attempts, whatever that might be, right? Within the one-year period, Brazil Tech will replace the revolver with an exact or comparable model. This warranty terminates automatically upon the transfer of the revolver to any individual or entity other than the original purchaser. Well, there it is. And then it just goes on about the warranty. And that is your manual. Put that aside. 
And of course, I'm not going to bore you with the lock. We all know what that is. But here is the pistol. And this literally is the unboxing. Other than my initial inspection, this is the unboxing. Of course, I inspected it before I took transfer. There you go. Comes in a nice little bag. Rossi bag. Bum, 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 bum. Let's get rid of the box. And look at the revolver. Okay, that's out of the way. And there she is. She's a beauty. I was lucky enough to find one with the laminate wood grips. I know the rubberized ones will probably absorb recoil better. They definitely will, but I saw this with the laminate grip. I was like, I'll take the recoil. This is absolutely beautiful with these grips. Let me give you a... Take a look at the grips. See how nicely they are. Nicely they fit. And this is what they call a satin... It is a satin stainless finish, all stainless steel, chambered in 357 Magnum. Of course, you can shoot 38s out of your 357 Magnum. So this with 38 plus P's, they say is ideal, which is what some people say. Uh, but if I have a 357 Magnum, guess what I'm carrying? You guessed it. Anyway, it really is a very nice revolver. It has a replaceable front sight the ramp over here you can actually you get a roll pin in there and you can take that out it has a fully shrouded ejection rod which is very nice let us uh, look at this side really quickly it's it's kind of got like a it's got softer edges it's not like sharp it's it's like almost got like a semi melt treatment on it I really like that. It's really smooth. The the bead blasting that they put on this, it's like a very fine bead blasting. It's it's gorgeous. Anyway, let's get rid of this tag. Let me get myself a pair of snip snips over here. Okay, this is official. It's like launching the ship. Bow done. Let me put that aside now. And let me take out the donut. Now here's here's one thing a lot of people, some people complain about is this. This is a target trigger. It's not a combat trigger. But what it does is it gives you a lot of leverage when you're drawing on the revolver. And let me open her up. And this is of course, we take out that little storage, what do we call it, storage or shipping donut, like a flag or whatever. So it is, it, the cylinder spins very nicely too. It's a six shot, as you can see. Very, very well made. Um, the points of lockup, it locks up in the rear. And it also locks up, it's got a lock right over here. So it has two point lockup inside of the frame, which is really nice. And the lockup of the cylinder is very nice. It's virtually no movement front to back. Side to side, very, as you can see, very little, very little movement. Your release for the uh, opening button release, someone correct me, what exactly do they call this thing? I'm going to call it the cylinder release. Push it forward, pop it out. You get your ejection rod here. It's got a nice... Long enough ejection rod to pop those suckers out of there real quick in a hurry. So when you get that, you give it a good... See, ready? Pow. And all those babies will pop right out of there. Okay. As far as the hammer. Cock your hammer back. If you notice, the firing pin is replaceable and it is mounted on the hammer. Which I like. It just makes it a lot easier to service. You could, it, it looks like it's in... Looks like a roll pin... Could be wrong, but it looks like a roll pin. And bottom line is, that's a replaceable part in there. It does have internal safeties. It doesn't have a transfer bar. It has built-in internal safeties. And I'm not exactly sure what those are, but I heard it's like a Smith & Wesson system. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly. But it does have an internal safety. 
so you don't have to worry about not being able to carry one with one in each cylinder perfectly safe okay so wood grips nice melted edges beautiful finish you've got your ramp on the back and then you've got your I can you call that like a, a channel and then a ramp site in the front probably gonna put some orange paint on that if not replace it with some kind of a site since this is replaceable but I don't really see a big need for it I'm probably just gonna put some orange paint right over here some high-vis paint um, as far as the trigger on this right here let me pop some snap caps in and I will demonstrate the trigger pull double and single action we will feed her. These are all snap caps, by the way. You can see they're completely inert. Phony dummy projectile and that's silicone filled. And, might I add, as soon as I load these in there, I will tell you where I got them. Okay, we are loaded with dummy rounds with snap caps. And put that down. Let me see. I got these from this guy, David Baker, from All American Training Rounds. There's his information right there. This is a veteran owned operation. I highly recommend supporting him. All American Company. There's his email address 82nd Parachute Rigger at gmail.com Dave Baker thank you for making a fine all-american product that's appreciated and that goes on and says the veteran owned and operated company excellent product I bought in several different caliber snap caps from him directly and um, there's his information you can look him up tell him I sent you we'll put that card aside okay now once again you have dummy rounds in. We will go with a double action. It's a nice, smooth double action. There's no grit at all. It, it's, it's not light, but you can see that it doesn't like stage. It's a smooth pull, and then it gets to the back and it just breaks. Let me see if I can get that right there you're right about there you double action then it breaks it's a smooth fluid pull and that wide trigger gives you a lot of leverage it really is a really nice i call this a middle of the road revolver um it's let me see i will put it up against they call this, I, it's supposed to be like a small frame, but I will match it up against my 38 Special, and we'll, uh, we'll go from this, you can see. I think this is in between a small frame and a medium frame, but I'm going to see if it fits in the holster, and I'll do a size comparison side by side. Okay, now, we'll cock it for a single action pull. Oh, that's just beautiful. It's got a sweet, sweet break on it. It's just got a really nice break. There's absolutely no grit in that. No dirt, no grit. I've heard really good things about these revolvers. I only got maybe one or two bad reviews as far as online out of many. And, um, and of course, so you know what you're shooting. It says 38 Special, 357 Magnum on the bottom. And I don't like this. They put this, the serial numbers on the side of the barrel. I don't like that. But it being stainless, it doesn't show up too much. But I just don't like it so much. They shouldn't have to do that. They should just put it here. And when I inquired about why do you put the serial numbers on the barrel, 
And um, my FFL said, so if they ever work on it, the barrels match to the frame. And I said, well, why couldn't they have, like, you know, <laughs> stuck it in here where it's not noticeable, you know? Da -da -da, right? There's your sign. But anyway, let's get a trigger pull on that, and we'll see where we're at as far as trigger pull weight. Okay. I'm going to have to flip it on this side. We're going to get a double... Okay, where we are visible. All right, let me see if I can get it's my wheel of gauge. This thing is, uh, it's zeroed out. It's not the greatest thing in the world for this because I get a lot of slippage on these triggers. So I'm going to try and get a hold on it. Yeah, see, I can't. Ready? I don't even think. No. See, this only goes up to 8 pounds, and it's off the scale. I heard they're like 12. Okay, ready? Let me try this. Try it like that. Eh, that ain't happening. Well, we know that the doubles, okay, the doubles going to be over 8 pounds, that's for sure, because this only goes to 8. So, let's try it again. No, not a chance. Not a chance. But, let me tell you, it feels like nothing. With that nice wide trigger face, it's, it's a nice, smooth, heavy, but smooth. Try this one more time. No, it's off the scale. See, I got it to pull, but it's off the scale. It literally pulled past 8 pounds. Now, let me try the single action pull. See what I got. Okay, single action pull. We are zeroed. We are zeroed. Here we go. And. Oops. Try it again. I slipped off. I think maybe one of these years I'll invest in a better, better trigger gauge. How's that sound? Okay. Ready? I got five and a half pounds that time. Now remember, this is brand new. I haven't even like put it through its battery of dry firing. I haven't taken the plate off. What I am going to do is I'm going to take the side plate off and I'm going to clean the internals out after I probably dry fired about 200 times or so with the snap caps and then I will lubricate it after I clean it out. Let me see. Ready? Yeah, see, that time it went to six pounds. Try it again. Got five and a half. Let's see if you can see that. Five and a half. Try it again. This isn't very scientific, but it gives you a general idea anyway. Oh, I got myself. <laughs> I got myself at the hammer spur. Don't try this at home, kid. Yep, I did get myself. I just scratched myself with it. It smarted. I gave blood for you people. I just want you to let you know that. Right? There you go. One, two, three. I got five pounds that time. Okay. Alrighty. So. So, as of right now, we're getting five pound trigger pull, or right around five pounds, give or take, with my super duper accurate manual wheel gauge. And it's off the scale. It's off the scale in the, uh, the double. But in the single, we're around five pounds. That's going to break in once I put it through its paces. I'll test it again later on. But I just wanted to share with you guys and gals um, the new acquisition. It's a really nice, beautiful 357 Magnum. Oh, wait. Let me put my other pistol up against it. Ha, almost forgot.
Here you go. Yeah. There's my Roscoe. So you can see the difference. It's obvious. There's my 38 Snubby. One of them. And then here's this one. Yeah, you can see the beef. This has got... It's definitely got beef in the frame. So that that's... There's one of the holsters of the 38. And as you can see, the 38 will go in that holster nicely. It fits right in there. Perfectly. But... I don't think we're going to have success. Huh. Wow. This actually does work. It's snugger. And it actually does work. I can I can use this holster. I am... Uh, and it fits really nice in there. Hang out a little bit. But if I adjust this back, this is completely adjustable. I'll be able to lock her down in there and we will be good to go. Ain't that a daisy, huh? That is a nice... And by the way, this is a... Um, what is this one? It's black, It's a Blackhawk made in Italy. And Blackhawk sells it. Italian leather. I actually picked this up at a local flea market last weekend. And it wasn't in this nice of shape. The leather was worn for wear. And um, and it had some fraying on it and whatnot. And I took the gear, the old cigarette lighter treatment. Not that I smoke, but I always keep one around just to do things like that. And then I put some black shoe polish on it, and boom, voila, cleaned it up. And now I have a pre-broken in, very nice, ten dollar. No, I'm sorry, I didn't pay ten dollars. Just they wanted twenty five. I gave them twenty dollars for it. Well worth it. It's at least a forty five, fifty dollar holster, brand new. And of course, you see it's got the. So you can pull it off and on your belt easily. And enough, enough about the holster. This isn't about the holster. It's about the revolver. Okay, so anyway, thanks for tuning in. That is the Rossi RP63 stainless steel, matte stainless steel with the laminate wood grips, 357 Magnum, 6-round capacity with a 3-inch barrel. Thanks again. Like I said, for watching. I appreciate you all. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and thumbs up. It always helps. we got to try to beat that algorithm so I can keep bringing you different and new and interesting things. And this is a non-funded, no-sponsor channel. I do not have any sponsors. We are not monetized. We don't even have Patreon. We just do this because we... We enjoy it, and we want to help the community in any way that we can by sharing information, answering questions, whatever. Just like you, just regular old people enjoying our hobby, and that's just about it, guys. So like I said, thank you again. Like, subscribe, thumbs up. Questions down below, comments, good, bad, whatever. I want to hear it all, and thank you again for watching. One more look at this beauty before we go. Not trying to flag you, I'm just giving you the look and and those aren't rounds, like I suppose there's just snap caps in there. So I don't want anybody to panic. She's a beaut. I love the craftsmanship on this. And there she is. Thanks again for watching everybody. Have a great night. Bye-bye.